If you're new to my channel, then welcome, my name's Samara. If you're a fan of luxury goods and handbags and jewellery, fashion hauls and vlogs, and you don't want to miss out on any videos, then please consider subscribing and feel free to check me out on Instagram where I post weekly. So today I'll be talking about the Chanel Maxi double flap classic bag and I'll be running through a few things. First of all, the size and how practical the bag is and whether or not I think it's worth the money. Since the pandemic started, Chanel have had their two price increases, one in January and another one in July. But if you're watching this in the US, then it was obviously going to be different. But apparently it's rumored that they're going to have a third price increase, which makes me think I need to go out and purchase one more classic bag before the price go completely crazy. So the price increase just makes it even more expensive to buy a classic handbag. Apparently, the price increase is only limited to the um, iconic models and the 2.55s. There's also a new policy that a customer can only buy one classic bag per year. So I'm sure you could get around that if you were thinking of purchasing more than one. You could buy it under your husband's name or your boyfriend. So I'm not too concerned about that. It's for me, it's more about whether the price increase justifies the purchase of the bag. Okay, so let's get into it. So this is the, obviously comes with a big black box, but I've put my boxes away. So I have these on display. Um, this is the dust bag that it comes in, bearing in mind that I've had this for a few years now so the dust bags may have changed but I really love the detailing, I think it looks really nice. Um, and then when you open the flap, the chain obviously sits at the top and the main bag sits right in here and this is actually really useful so if I'm travelling I take it in my dust bag. If I'm storing the bag, I always keep it in my dust bag. I don't really put it back in the box, but it ke I keep it in my dust bag. And this is my favorite, favorite bag from all. Um, I love the little Karl Lagerfeld signature on the side and the iconic picture here. So once you open the bag, oh my God, I get excited every time I unpack this. <laughs> I don't know if you guys are the same, but I am going to I'm a little bit extra, so I'm gonna have it on here. So as I show you the bag, I'm gonna just place this on here, like this. So the first thing that you can see if I lay this flat, so these bags are an amazing investment piece, especially the classics. I got this a few years back and I think I paid around 4,500. This is the maxi and I think this is the largest size. You could get a jumbo I think which is a little bit smaller um, and this retailed at that time around 4,500 and I know now the price with the price increase it's gone up to 7,570. That's considerably high and I know for a fact that if I was going to purchase this now in today's rate there's no way I'd pay that much money. Not for Chanel anyway. Hermes, definitely, but not this. Although this is a beauty. Well, the prices are way more than it should be. There's no way that I could justify paying seven and a half thousand pounds for this bag in this market. And if you were thinking of purchasing um, a bag, maybe vintage or pre-loved would be ideal. But bear in mind that sometimes the pre-loved bags are a little bit more than the retail price so you may want to think about that some I mean some bags like the smaller bags in lambskin don't retail as that much but if you're looking for this combo with the gold hardware and the calfskin in a larger size then possibly more than it would be in store. I'm so happy with my maxi even after so many years there's hardly any wear or tear and, and I think that's because of the way the material is. The calf skin is so durable in comparison to the lamb skin. And if you're a mum like me and you don't want to be too precious with your handbag and you're worried that it might get scratched, then the calf skin is probably the best one to go for. It's got a solid structure. And as you can see from the bottom, I like the fact that shows you how much space you actually have in the handbag and it's quite hard and it's not malleable you can't kind of shift it into the shape that you want this is how the classic bag 
in the calfskin comes. Um, gold hardware isn't 24 karat gold like it once used to be. I'm actually quite impressed with how good um, and durable the gold is. It hasn't tarnished, but I know for a lot of girls, some of them some of them have actually complained that the, tarn the gold wear has tarnished. So let's talk about the size. First of all, it's important to know the difference between the dimensions. The jumbo is about 30 centimeters wide and 20 centimeters tall with the 10 centimeter depth. The maxi, which is this one, is the largest of all the classic flat family, coming in at about 34 centimeters wide and 23 centimeters tall and 10 centimeter in depth, which is the same. So you think there's there's not, there's not much difference between the uh, the maxi and the jumbo, but the jumbo has a longer chain, so you can wear it crossbody. You can wear this crossbody, but it falls a little bit longer. Um, I'll insert some pictures on what it looks like worn as a crossbody. But mainly I use this bag just over the shoulder. And it's very much of a daytime bag. It's not an evening bag at all. What I love about the bag, it's got a side pocket and that just enables you to kind of put in your card that you need or anything that you need or your phone that you need to kind of access from the bag. And you don't really have to keep opening the front the front opens like this. I'm going to open the bag like this so that you can see properly. So you have, when you open the bag, you have a zip. I tend not to really open this much or use it. Um, you could do if you really wanted to, to kind of just put things in. It's just for more storage. But really, I don't over use that. Then you've got the flap and it's got this gorgeous burgundy coloured flap. I've got a little bit of dirt there. That's only because of makeup. And that is the inside of the bag so it has a pocket here a pocket here and then a pocket here at the moment i have what have i got well, i've got my university card i've got one of the hotel cards and i've got my authentication card here and then you've got a space at the front which is so ideal again just the easy access um yeah i've got quite a few bits in there which this is what kind of i really really like this is most used and the zip at the back is most used now what i tend not to do is when i open my bag i don't really open it fully only because i don't want to cause any crease lines in here so when you when i say this is my baby i literally look after it like it's brand new i've had it for a couple of years but i i tend to just open it like this and again i try not to open it too much and um, but if you're not that precious about your handbag obviously go ahead and open the full flap as you wish but i'm just going to show you how i pack this bag so i'm going to turn it around And actually, before I do, I just want to show you the chain. It is so beautiful. I mean, this is the classic chain that you get on a Chanel. And just the weight on its own is actually quite heavy. So when you do purchase the bag, just bear in mind that the bag itself does weigh quite a bit. So when you're filling it up, obviously, it will weigh even more. Um, and also, I'm going to show you this detailed bit here it's got the Chanel there and the Paris written there and you can wear this in different ways but firstly let me just show you how I actually pack my bag so I have my Louis Vuitton makeup bag which I literally just pop in here and then I've got my Louis Vuitton Demia diary which I put on the side the moment it's like that you see there's still quite a bit of room in there i don't overpack it but just the essential things that i need like my sunglasses i'll pop in here just standing up and what's nice is the sunglasses are the same length of the bag which means that it slots in really really nicely and then i've got my perfume which really i should get like a handbag size but that's that and then i've got my hand cream which i pop standing up and then some hand sanitizer because we are still in covid 
and I use my Cartier little pouch. They sit just on top. And last but not least, my trusted wallet. And again, just pop that at the front. So that is packed quite a bit. Let me stick this in. But that's how I actually, they're all the things that are that I need. And when you pack it like that, you can still see that it's still in shape. It hasn't lost its shape because it's packed quite a bit but overall I love my bag I'm happy I got this and if you're thinking of purchasing a Chanel bag for yourself I would recommend a smaller size if you can't if you can't justify spending seven and a half thousand on the larger bag then go for a smaller bag but make sure that you can fit your essentials in there because the worst thing is buying a bag that you can't really use and put whatever you want in there so if you were going to get a first Chanel bag I'd recommend going for a smaller or a medium. The, I think a larger one's not ideal for someone who's purchasing for the first time. I just think the bigger size works for me, but if I had my time over again I and children weren't a decision-making factor, then I would definitely go for the uh, medium or the small. The calf skin is the most durable material, and if I was purchasing the first time at Chanel, I'd definitely go for calf skin. Um, because you have to be really careful if you choose the lambskin material. It's very much more um, scratchable, and if that's a word. And when you're wearing your bags, you don't want to be worrying too much about if you're going to scratch it. The calf skin, you could get away with scratches and you would not even notice on here. And you don't have to be too precious with the bag. So in terms of the hardware, it really depends on what you gravitate to. I tend to wear a lot of gold and rose gold, hence my jewellery. Um, so I'm always drawn towards gold. I don't have anything silver and I don't really have many bags I've got with silver hardware so I guess that's why I don't go for silver. I'm more really drawn towards the gold but again if you're buying a Chanel for the first time I think the most important thing to think about is definitely the material and the size and I think the hardware is more down to preference. I always said that when I started my handbag collection that I tend to go for classic bags and definitely would not pay for anything that's seasonal and the reason being is because these bags do cost a lot and if something's if a bag's in trend just for that season I don't think I could justify the price. So that's the reason why I would never pay anything for a seasonal bag. Fendi have some gorgeous bags, but again, I know that will go out of style very quickly. So if you're thinking of investing in a bag for the first time, really think hard about a classic bag. It doesn't matter what um, brand it is. For example, if you look at Dior, if they have their Lady Dior bag, they will always have that. I always said to myself so when I started my handbag collection that I would go for brands that are more high-end, and classic bags because they're going to stay with me forever so even if I wanted to pass this on to my children it would still be as beautiful as it is today so for example um Fendi I love love their bags but I would rather pay for a Chanel or a Hermes or a Dior they're the three top brands that I would go for um so I'm going to wrap this up now. I hope you enjoyed my video. I'm going to do some more of my um, luxury handbag reviews. Um, if you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up. And hopefully I'll see you again next time for another bag review.